proudest day and the proudest time in the, the seat of a rally here. Because that day and that hour and those minutes, I got the butt between my teeth. You know, I really stood up and was counted and said, this is not getting away. I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me, what are we doing? I said, we're going for gold, Barrett. That's all we said. I can still picture that run. That was just the best, best run ever. Welcome along to Crunching Gears, the Rally Podcast, Season 3, Episode 18. Connor, we're going to talk rallying once again, and we are another busy week. We're looking back at the Northwest stages from last weekend, and we look forward to then is the Circuit Ireland this weekend. And the, we have Luke Barry joining us now in a few minutes, and Luke is just full of chat and, you know, a real good banter with him, and an absolute pleasure as always to chat to Luke, isn't it? Oh, look, he's a great lad to catch up with, extremely knowledgeable, and the beauty about it is, you know, as, as we've seen, we can chat to him about BRC, WRC, or the Irish Tarmac Championship, he knows his stuff, so, sure. you know, he's always a bit of crack. Yeah, that's for sure, that's for sure, and I suppose before we go any further, please like, share, subscribe, and rate the podcast, and a, a comment makes a huge difference as well, and a rating as well. And as well as chatting to look, we've got a chance to catch up with some of the competitors from uh, Northwest Stages as well too. And then from you know previewing the Circuit of Ireland, then we talked to Graham Stewart, event director, and Kevin O'Driscoll joins us as well too. So yeah, lots going on, but I think we'll catch up with Luke first of all. Northwest Stages last weekend, and what a result, Chris Ingram coming away with the one. Um, we knew he was good, look, but we didn't really see him being so dominant. Yeah, I think before the weekend started, there's a lot of talk about the kind of Keith Cronin and Chris Ingram battle because Keith has obviously shown so well in the Irish Star Match chapter this year. He's effectively been almost untouchable in a lot of senses. And we know how good he is. So even though this was Chris Ingram on what is his local event, it's, he was one of the few top drivers to have done it before. Keith still looked like a really convincing prospect. He'd had all that seat time for West Coast the weekend before. I guess... Chris probably showed or reminded a lot of people at the weekend just how good he is. I think it can be difficult to sort of understand where the line is between like an international competitor and somebody that's really, really good at home. He did seem to have another gear if he needed it at the weekend. And I think a lot of people have told me who were out watching the stages that him and, and Keith to an extent, but particularly Chris, looked like a, a slight step ahead in the committed places. He just wasn't hesitating. He knew he, he trusted himself. He backed himself and he got the job done. Um, yeah, I think this is a massive shame for Keith that we never really got to see his his true potential. It seemed that all the sort of <laughs> good fortune, I say good fortune, that sort of decries what he's done in the RTRC, but any issues he's managed to potentially avoid all caught up with him and, and more, I think, at the weekend. Yeah, for sure, Connor. Like, it, it was like, it just didn't seem to click for uh, Keith and Mikey at the weekend at all there. No, they just had problems from, from more or less the get-go in the morning loop of stages and uh, just weren't able to get it sorted out at all for themselves. So it's just unfortunate we never got to see Keith and Mikey shine and we never got to see that battle that had been anticipated, as Luke said, there between Chris and Keith. Yeah, and I suppose we should touch on, like, you know, uh, like horrendous for the, the, the organisers of the event. Like, it just seemed to be, like... The, the morning loop especially, just everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. But you have to give them their dues. They, you know, they, t- they took the decision to, you know, to cancel the fourth and fifth stage, bring everybody back into service and go again. And they got the full five stages in the afternoon and it seemed to run pretty well. Look, you were at the event. Yeah, i just say it was one of the more interesting services that we've been at in, in the middle of that rally with a lot of, I guess, pandemonium and confusion about what was, was going on. But you're right, I think, I think it was... I guess the perfect storm of everything spiring against the organisers. And it is, I guess, the sort of drawback of these closed road events, particularly on narrow stages like we had on the Northwest, is that any kind of incident more or less will cause some kind of, at, at best, a delay, at worst, a stage cancellation. So it just seemed to keep happening at the same point of the pack as well. The top 10 would about just about get through, but everybody else was behind. So it was like there's this massive, like, two hour gap, I think, between the, the top and the end of the field, which was was quite large so yeah i think there's definitely things that the organizing team can learn from the way the event went but absolutely fair play to them to get that afternoon ahead because it was a lot of fear and speculation that actually they wouldn't 
get any rallying at all at worst. Maybe some stages would be lost in the afternoon, but they reduced it from minute gaps to 30 seconds, which obviously helped sort of cover them against the world closure and stuff. And all five stages went with without a hitch. So, yeah, it was great. We finally got to see some, some proper rallying action in the afternoon. Yeah, and Connor, the conditions looked horrendous too. Like uh, it seemed to be all nearly everything possible: one snow, rain, sleet, and you know to keep everyone motoring along and you know keeping the keeping the head and getting the event to the finish. Uh, you know, it was a it was a struggle for everybody out there. I look tough going and, and unfortunate because, you know, we'd seen a bit of rejuvenation around the BRC this year. We'd seen a lot of really good promotion and, and anticipation. We'd seen a really good entry list. So there was a lot of excitement and fervor, you know, for, for the event. And it was just unfortunate. But like fair play to the organisers, fair play to the, the, the marshals out there in, in all conditions. And as Luke was saying, you know, you get narrow tarmac roads and we know what that's like here. And if, you know, if, if it's mucky and slippy in places, it can easily cause a blockage or an issue and uh but you know they they worked hard and, and didn't give up and, and they got it back on track again that's for sure, no, that's for sure. If, if, I, if i could just quickly add in there as well i think what's interesting is this the northwest stage has been running for years but only recently has it been a, a closed road rally and actually weirdly this is only the third person we've had even though the first was five years ago now because didn't run last year and obviously through covid there wasn't any event but this is the first time we've had i guess difficult weather to contend with, I think that maybe sort of exposed some of the things that could be learned from. But as speaking to to William Christ very briefly at the end, and he looked to me, and he was like, he was just relieved to make it to the end of that rally. That's how difficult it was. In his words, far more difficult than West Cork, which I thought was quite interesting because we saw how difficult West Cork yeah. was, particularly on the the Saturday. But but yeah, I, I think that was the the sad thing that, that Connor sort of mentioned there was the buzz was huge and. To an extent with these things, whenever there's that much anticipation, the end product is almost always going to feel not like a letdown, but it's never going to feel totally amazing. It's almost impossible to beat that level of hype that was there. But the buzz and anticipation was huge on the Friday beforehand. The, the ceremonial start in the evening at Garstein was amazing. I've heard great things about it, but the turnout was immense. You could barely move for people. And I know for a fact that there's lots of people there that weren't rallying people. Of course, there were the odd rally fans and people, parts of teams, but I could hear conversations about the very clearly local people just out experiencing it on the Friday and talking about going to the stages and stuff. And that's exactly what we need to be be doing with rallying. But but yeah, I guess the morning was just an unfortunate uh, thing where there's just so much hype and almost felt like a bit of a, an anti-climax. But as I say, we still had a result to talk about at the end, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, because like you, you just touched on something there, like bringing rally into the people, that's really, you know, that's how we're going to drive it back the popularity, by getting it there, getting those random people just that's happened to be out for on a Friday night over there looking and seeing what's going on. And, you know, they might turn out, they might go out and spectate, they might go into service, you know, or they might, you know, go around, around the stalls and they'll spend a few quid. Like, that's what we need. You know, there's no point in shouting into the echo chamber all the time. But do you know what impressed me as well is, and it sounds really obvious, but it's the sort of, A, the entertainment they put on, there was like a proper like drumming band and stuff like warming us up before the cars turned up. B was the access. Yes, obviously you need to be be careful and not let it be a complete free-for-all, but there wasn't loads of barriers everywhere that kept everyone distant. You could feasibly get in amongst it yourself. And C, it's the timing of it. It was about half six on a Friday afternoon or slash evening, which was ideal. Ideal because you've got people that are either maybe coming out, out of work, going back in, into town for an evening out with friends or colleagues or whatever. It was a very social time to be around. So it was convenient for everyone to sort of, even if you didn't know what was happening, and if you're in the area, I, I struggle to <laughs> think you wouldn't know it was at least coming through. But you could have feasibly just stumbled upon it and been intrigued by it. Um, yeah, I think everything, even actually in fairness on the Saturday yeah, it was evening as well. Um, the delays, everything. The finish was in a similar location that was outside quite a big supermarket. So it was very, very, very good at bringing things to the heart of, of the town, which is easier said than done, I think. So yeah, absolutely fair play for, for that. Excellent. And Connor, on the stages, like you know, you know, we spoke last week about Wall and Liam, another superb performance there again. And again, you know, in one sense, what do you call it? This is about seat time. It's not about the BRC for them, but like a very strong performance, as Luke said, you know, and as they came away from it saying in tough conditions, 
and they had to put it all in the line basically over five stages. They didn't have a you know with with the event being reduced in size, they didn't have a long event to to really make their mark. But they certainly didn't hold back, and and a solid second. Uh, you know, you really couldn't fault their performance at all. No, and like the the new Yaris, like you know, it looks superb. Um, maybe look, you've seen it on the stages. What's your initial thoughts on it? First of all, I can't stop looking at it. Um, I think <laughs> this, it's an imposing car anyway. It's in a, we all know as a road going version, let alone with the rally that's in it. The GR Yaris is a great looking car. Um, it's obviously the first one over here, so there's going to be a lot of fanfare about it. But to get Castro on board in that livery was such a masterstroke because it, it, it honestly, it looks even better in person than everything you've seen on the internet last week. It's it's special. Um, but yeah, I, I think the performance for, for Merriam was very mature, actually. He recognised that he couldn't go completely flat out everything on the line because he, he didn't fully, not, not trust, but obviously he's, he's only had about, I think it was 80k in the car before the rally. And in the end, he didn't even get the, <laughs> the full mile and he thought he would. So to do that when he's still learning the car, get a solid third place, I think is is definitely speaking volumes of of where he's at. And it was certainly interesting to see how his, his pace and island came over and translated to the UK as well, because over here, I think we've all seen how great he's been going, but to see that and ahead of guys that I wouldn't say you'd expect to be ahead of him, but to see him so comfortably ahead of people that are very, very established over here was a great marker of, of his progress. That's for sure. And like Connor, like great performances right down through the field there. Like James Williams had a great run, for, you know, first time out in, uh, you know, it must be six months or like. Uh, Cara Diggian, I think, was his last event too. So to see James slot back in there. But the, something that really stood out for me was Max McRae. Only his second rally and then Gennar 5 Rally 2 car. And they set some fantastic times there in the afternoon. It could have been maybe like the, his, uh, his morning was probably disrupted with being running so far back. But like, that shows great promise for the like, And Max is only, what, 18, 19 years age? Absolutely. And again, you know, little, very little experience in the Rally 2 car. And as you you know, and, and where he was running in the field in the morning, I don't think did he even get much in the way of completed stages. So, you know, the times he did set in the afternoon were pretty impressive. Um, And again, unfamiliar with the territory and the stages as well. So, you know, so many new factors there for him and really did. Uh, I think what was it just it was his, his final stage just didn't have a, a good run on it. But Bar that, like, he really was uh, setting an impressive, uh, you know, I, and I suppose there's a lot of pressure on him. Like, obviously, he's carrying the family name and everybody's going to be paying attention to what he's doing. But, you know, he he certainly delivered. Yeah, like, look, great to see the McCray name being held, you know, in such high regard and being the button being passed. Yeah, I think what really impresses me with, with Max, though, to be fair, is that you actually... And it sounds a bit daft because obviously we all know he's a McRae, but if he didn't, you wouldn't. He doesn't, he's not trying to hang on to the family heritage. That makes sense. Yes, he's proud of it, but he's very determined to be his own character. And I think he absolutely is. He's one of the most laid back people I think I've ever met. And at, and at 19, because <laughs> what he's doing, I think that's really, really impressive. And and as you both have said, the, the speed in the afternoon was, was mega, has to be said, because that was a seriously strong field. And this was, yes, okay, he did a rally at Knock Hill a couple of years ago. This was his first, like, proper, I guess, rally environment rally, if we can call it that, um, in a Rally 2 car on tarmac. And to be doing that in those difficult conditions really highlighted the raw speed that that he's got. So, yeah, I think that was a, a very eye-catching performance from Max. And, um, yeah, I, I'm sure he's got a very big future in this sport ahead of him. That's for sure. And like, I, I thought was a lovely thing there, the BRC put it out in their socials, was... On the, the start ramp, Jimmy getting uh, interviewed and, you know, saying about, oh, you know, the next generation and all, Max starting rally and how proud he was and, all, and also how proud he was to be being interviewed by his granddaughter. I just thought that was just such a lovely story. And like, that's, we don't exploit them wee stories enough there, really, in rallying. Yeah, I think Jimmy, <laughs> we all know it, um, but he is the keenest rally man you'll ever see. Um, and I think it gives nothing gives him greater pride than, and it's same with any grandparent, I think, really, but to see your grandchildren doing things. But I guess following in the footsteps of what everybody else has done, I think that'll be really, really special to him. But just a little sort of anecdote, I guess, and a, and a, a story was I was lucky enough last week to be invited along with, with Gary Pearson to the sort of shakedown of the Rally 2 cars at M Sports facility before the weekend. And 
we turned up and Max was going around the track. Alistair and Jimmy both standing there. Alistair having a chat with everybody. Jimmy was just glued watching what Max was up to, just watching the car go around, looking at his lines. Every time he went out, he was standing over the wheel, just having a look, and he was just he's just constantly interested. He's he's mad for it, as they say, isn't he? So um I think it's amazing to see that the passion is still burning as, as strongly as that. Um I think we'd love to see Jimmy back in a car, wouldn't we, if that can ever be possible? Because it's been a while since he's done done something. But yeah, um, really nice to see it be such a family affair for the craze. Yeah. And like Connor, at eighty years of age, like Jimmy has had the you know, the, the life, you know, he's an ambassador here in Ireland and the UK. Like to see that that level of interest and involvement still there, great to see. I oh, look the, the the vitality of the man. You know, as Luke said, you know, would love to see him back in the car. Like he'd be more than able to be back in the car. That's the thing, you know, and he certainly hasn't lost his passion at all. Considering everything, uh, with you know, with Colin and all the rest of it, he still as eager and as 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 committed to the sport as ever. And and you know, anytime you saw him interviewed, be it at the ERC or WRC events last year, you know, again the passion's just oozing from him. And you know, I'm sure he's just beaming with pride the fact that there's another McRae name out there again in the sport. That's for sure. That's for sure. And then uh, only another few weeks, then it'll be round two uh, rally nuts, isn't it? Then and like onto gravel, and that's going to present a whole different challenge for all those guys again. You know, the likes of the Yaris going to have to get it set up for the gravel. You know, Ingram and Cronin has to get through the circuit this weekend. So uh, there's lots of variables, and you know, Ocean Price is another man that you know started to show really well there on Saturday. It's, uh, rally nuts could be anybody's game. I was going to say, I'm actually glad you mentioned the Ocean Day. Because just mm. as you were at, what, sort of wording that question, I thought we haven't actually <laughs> highlighted that before it's from him as well, because he was really close to getting on the lead until unfortunately a mechanical sidelined him on, on Saturday. But but I agree. It's always exciting to see, I think, the difference between tarmac and, and gravel and who's maybe quicker on one surface than the other. I think we'll probably, as a result, see a slight shake up in the order, but I think it's hard to look beyond Chris still being a favourite. Although having said that, he's not done anywhere near as much on gravel as he has on, on tarmac. For example, he, we believe he'll still be in the, the polo for this one, and he's not driven that car on gravel before, to my knowledge. So that'll be something for him. Keith as well hasn't been on gravel for a good while, so that'll be something for him to adapt to. I actually would quietly fancy Price for a really, really good result. It's whole ground for him. He looked incredibly relaxed last weekend. and It's often a cliche we say with drivers, but we know how much of a a big deal it was for him to finally win that British Championship two years ago. And I think there was a very clear difference in his demeanour um, at the weekend. He just looked more free, just a weight was off his shoulders and he just, he was there. Obviously he was enjoying it before, but everything now, it's like it's like the sort of Max Verstappen analogy in Formula 1. It's like everything he achieves now is a bonus, isn't it? And he had his best mate in the car with him. Like he was a happy chappy. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd expect quite a good result from him. We've got some interlopers uh speaking of max verstappen his dad's coming <laughs> in a skoda as well which is cool so yeah it's all quite exciting so thanks there to look um we're going to hear more of him before the episode's over and uh, now we're going to hear from some of the competitors we're going to start off with the winner chris ingram and then that will roll into liam regan and marianne evans chris ingram winner of the northwest stages 2024 it's almost a week later but it still sounds good i would say yeah yeah it's uh it was great to get that that win under my belt after, yeah, quite a difficult start to the season with Monte Carlo, which didn't go to plan, having problems with the car, with the team. Uh, but to join Melvin Evans and Castrol in the BRC, it's an uh, amazing opportunity. And, yeah, just so so happy to get that first win. Yeah, because like, like we know here in Ireland what a professional outfit that Melvin Evans runs, you know. And to see that the way that launch one, you know, the, the Monday prior to the event with the Yaris and the announcement that yourself was joining the team and all, it was so slick, so well organised. Like there's a lot of hype building up around this season. Yeah, and it's for me it's just what the BRC needs. Yeah. It's just not really had the the quantity and quality of entries really for the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's, you know, everyone's there in the t- best of the UK and the best of Ireland as well. So it's it's great to see. Yeah. And was that what attracted you back? Like, you know, the promise of, you know, terrestrial TV and, you know, the quality field, you know, there's so many 
previous champions there and you know as you say the quality and the quantity is there now as well yeah exactly mate the the tv coverage is a massive thing for me because my rallying's 100 percent funded through sponsors so um that was the big plus but also the rallies the rallies are also you know some of the events are, you've got some classics but also some new events like the northwest like um rally Keridigian, Keridigian, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but <laughs> it's some great events and um, just a combination of all that, it was a no-brainer, really. Yeah, because, yeah, the, there is a, there's a real good hype building about this here and, like, if, you know, if the, the weekend was nothing to go by, I think it's going to be a, a fantastic championship. I got off to a wee bit of shaky start in the first loop, there's no point in denying that, but once they got it under control, the rally run the clockwork for the last loop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to be to be fair to the organisers, when the cars are blocking the road, it's it's a hard thing to manage, isn't it? And unfortunately, it all happened in three stages at one time. <laughs> so um, they did really well to get it back on track. I, I think mm -hmm. that's for sure. That's for sure. And like for yourself, getting back into the polo as well, was it like comfortable as well? Just getting slipping back into the polo as a car you've been familiar with in the past. Yeah, it was exactly. I I drove a few um, European polos last year, but Melvin's polo was just so well set up for, you know, bumpy UK Irish roads, and it, it just it really suited that event. Yeah, and like you know, that's a, an event you have you know you've done in the past, you've won it in previous, but the, these roads were different. These weren't the, the roads used in previous time either. So yes, it was local for you, but it's, it's not they're not roads you're using every week kind of thing anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think about sixty percent of the rally was the same. Mm -hmm. So I did. I you know, I remembered those roads well, and that was a good advantage. But people, you know, it's it's not really that local to me. It's still like an hour, an hour and a half up the road from where <laughs> I'm from. So, um, it, it I suppose it does still feel like a local event though, because there's not much rallying in in that area. And and for, and for you to to come home again and compete, you know. Like, does it give you a lot of joy to you know even be close to you know your for you were you were brought brought up and all and to you know maybe see a few familiar faces about it as well? Yeah, I mean weirdly that's the first time I've ever like gone to head head to head against the likes of Keith o Ocean Price, um, William and you know in the equal machinery. Uh -huh. So it's it was yeah it was great to be back against them because you know I've been focusing on European stuff the last several years so but it's it's great to be back in in the mix and it's just looking so strong for the rest of the season as well the BRC yeah because like you, you know everybody seems to be committed to the championship and like if all works out according to plan you're going to get a Toyota you know hopefully in the next couple of events there'll be a Toyota coming and like these Yaris look they look a well sort of car yeah, I think already it's really strong. Like for Merion to get the podium already is a hell of a result. And on gravel, they're already winning rallies abroad. So I think it's already there. And yeah, looking forward to get the second car. Yeah, <laughs> and like for you know to, that that launch, you know, we talked to Merion about this as well. The iconic Castrol Toyota brand, like that's like. You know, for you know, old guys like me, that just rekindled, rekindled so many memories. And it must be lovely to be part of that as well and see all that hype building online. It's amazing to be a part of it. And like you said, the launch was so slick. And just to have that brand and the association back in rallying, it's so exciting for, for all of us. And, um, you know, even like having M Sport there as a team as well, it's all, you know, the more the merrier and hopefully it'll grow and there'll be even more as, you know, as the championship builds back up. Mm -hmm. I, because, you know, like this is the thing with the, you know, the Rally 2 R5 category. There's no sort of one car that's head and shoulders above the rest. Like the Polo, like, has like stopped development, but it's still, you know, as competitive as the, the brand new car. Like that's the great thing with that that regulation that has kept the whole thing very close and very tight as well. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's you can't really say one car's a standout car. I think they're all so close and you've got different cars winning different stages on 
gravel and tarmac, haven't you? So it's mm -hmm. it's the perfect class rally two, and I hope that the FIA realise it. And yeah, just having six. Well, in Sweden, there was only like four in the end, but it's just not enough in Rally One, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because like even you look at yeah WRC two, ERC, all these events like there is like twenty, thirty Rally Two cars, and like to me, it just seems like yeah. an absolute no brainer, doesn't it? Yeah, and in in the UK and Ireland, yeah. forty, fifty Rally <laughs> Two cars. So yeah, it's uh, it is a no brainer, like you said. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, looking forward now to the, the, the rest of the season, like Rally Nuts, come, oh, we should say before we go on, like the ceremony will start and the finish. Like the crowds that were out, like wasn't that fantastic? Great to see that kind of buzz, like people that maybe don't know an awful lot about rallying coming and getting involved and seeing what's yeah. happening as well. Yeah, I mean, th those kind of scenes will be typical in, in Ireland, I, I guess. And, you know, in Belgium where rallying's, a bigger thing but in england it's not really it's rallying's been tucked away for quite a while so mm -hmm. as an english lad it's great to see that that it was amazing to be part of it and it's great to see that hopefully sports back on the up yeah and like you know that could inspire the, the next generation you know we've seen like photos and like uh, wee clips of like kids you know sitting in the car over getting autographs like that that's how you started like that was what got your energy building like yeah you got the opportunity to meet your your idols whenever you were young as well yeah exactly yeah it was um special and to you know to go over as car one it's really amazing feeling mm -hmm. for sure for sure i then as i now looking forward then now to the, you know rally nuts now in less than a month's time now and you know on to gravel and you know we know how well sort of the polo was and gravel and all too would you be confident yeah. heading into round two now as well yeah, definitely. Um, I'm really excited for it because I've not driven on gravel. Well, I've not I've not done a gravel rally in a four wheel drive car in, in a rally two car since uh, Greece 2022. So almost like two years ago. Um, I'm just can't wait to. Yeah, it's it's like a different sport altogether driving on gravel, but. Personally, I don't have a preference, but I think gravel's a bit more fun. Yeah, there's a bit more movement in the car and a wee bit more... Uh, you, you, uh, heightens your senses maybe more. Yeah, I'd say it's more like a bit of a, a dance. Like, there's a <laughs> rhythm in the car, whereas tarmac's just so ballistically fast and there's no room for error on tarmac, whereas gravel, you can get away with a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to get back out on those... Welsh stages, which are just classics, aren't they? Yeah, because like uh, some of the stages that's been used in the event are like, as you say, like they're, 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 the names will just like strike, you know, fear and joy, and you know, they they, they stir up so many emotions. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's like a full day of Rally GB. The route mm -hmm. will be this year, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an epic and. Yeah, I'm, I've I've not tried the polo yet on gravel either, so I'm excited for that too. Um, yeah, will you get a pre-event test in as well? Yeah, we're going to do a day at Sweet Lamb, so that'll be that'll be fine. We're looking back at the Northwest stages, Liam. Yourself and Wall come away with a fantastic second overall. Yeah, yeah, well, it was really good. Um, challenging rally, uh, whilst the stages weren't that short, they had a lot in them. You know, the surface was very shiny, a lot of mud in the road. Uh, the weather turned a bit nasty on us as well. So, yeah, we had a good result. Um, didn't really focus too much on everything around us. We just worked on on our pace notes and worked on car setup with M Sport, and you know, just focused on what we were doing. And and the result was quite good at the end. Yeah. Yeah, and like the last two weekends, West Cork and fully and into, and into the Northwest stages, like it has to like go beyond your expectations of where you hope to be. I suppose you could say that, Kevin, but you know we actually didn't have any expectations. Our focus is solely the WRC2 campaign, and everything is, is working towards that. So we know how fast all the Irish tarmac regulars are. You know, We had no aspirations of challenging them. Um, the first time we drove the car on a bumpy road was the first stage. So that's, you know, that's what we're working on. Um, now, we put in the same effort as we always do on the notes and, again, on the setup. 
Um, we work quite closely with our engineer Rory and with a lot of conversations before the rally as to what we're going to try throughout the rally. So, yeah, I mean, we were happy with how the weekend developed. Very challenging rally, West Cork. Um, it was 260 kilometres. So that's probably longer than an ERC and just shy of a of a world event. Um, so there was a lot to get our teeth into. And, like, we really enjoyed it. We enjoyed rallying against our friends, seeing in, in Northwest stages there, running behind Marion, which we haven't done in quite a while. So, yeah, we had an enjoyable two weekends and we learned a lot from it. Excellent. And Marion, like you've taken a new challenge on this year. Uh, you're looked, looking at the BRC and you've gone down the route with the, the Yaris and we've seen, you know, how how fantastic that looked, the Castro livery and the, all, you know, all the the keyboard guys are going mental now with the whole, you know, looking back, looking forward kind of thing. I love the car. How, how are you finding it so far? I bet you never expected to see Mr. Volkswagen in the Toyota, did you? No. <laughs> um, no, the, the, the car was very good, actually. Um, we'd always had, if we'd have got it a, a, a week earlier, maybe West Cork could have been possible just for a bit of a run before, but it left everything very tight, to be honest. But um, no, to be fair, out the box, I'd done about, I would say, 50, 60k in the car before the rally, maybe. And yeah, just we were pretty fast on the first stage, even, to be fair. Um, I wouldn't say I was anywhere near the comfort level I have in a polo, obviously, because I've done like 30 rallies in a polo, but. You know, I think it's a credit to, to how good the car is. We could be there or thereabouts at the start, you know, um, with quite limited data as well. Um, you know, there are other boys in new cars, but, you know, if boys jumping into Fiesta and stuff, I guess they have some data over the years, whereas all we have from Toyota, to be fair, is what they've learned in testing Monte Carlo and one rally in Italy. So, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't 100% perfect, but it was a very good starting point. And, um, yeah, we're, we're, I'm pretty pretty positive about it all, actually. So, um you know, if we can start there and build on it, then hopefully it should be good things to come. Yeah, because like, even the like, simple things like, you know, how to turn on the wipers, how to, how to turn on the lights, you would know instinctively how to do that in the polo. But in the Yaris, you probably have to think, right, I need to do this and this. You know, it's, it's all those wee things that makes a huge difference. It's funny you mentioned the wipers, actually. The wipers is like, um, it was one of my pet hates in the polo and the best <laughs> thing about the Yaris, because so I would have copied the Rally 1 car with the wiper mechanism and it's brilliant. It's so easy to use. Um, there's a wiper mechanism on the polo that kind of causes to go off on the else to last year. So I never really liked that. But yeah, there's little things. I mean, that there's like on the steering wheel of the polo, the indicator buttons are in the middle, whereas on the Iris are at the bottom. So on the road, I was always pressing the indicators and pressing the launch button on the Toyota instead, you know, <laughs> just just little things. But, you know, this morning I, I drove, a, jumped into a polo to move it around to, into the back of the, the garage. And and I was dry, like inside, I was looking for things like you would in a Toyota, you know, after one day in it. So you adapt pretty quickly, but yeah. So for everything to become second nature, it'll take a bit more time, but uh, it'll come. Excellent. And like Liam, from your point of view too, like the, we've seen online, like the Northwest stages, there was a lot of demands put on the organizers. And like it was, it was almost a, as a, such a thing as the imperfect storm, like they, they, they cope with so much, but the way they turned it around and you all got five good clean stages at the end, like it could have been a complete disaster, but they managed to turn it around, and the the the, cha the stages did seem to, to provide a good stern challenge. I right, well, just before we get on that, Kevin, there I think Marion's been sat in that Toyota like making car noises for about ten days. You know, you know <laughs> the, of the, the one thing I was disappointed with, Marion didn't land out. You know, with the the peakless helmet like Austin McHale, that would have really set yes. <laughs> Now, but joking aside, um, yeah, look, the, the rally came under a lot of criticism which I think was very unfair because they had a lot of challenges in the morning. Um, there was a lot of cars went off and the services were deployed and I thought the organisers coped quite well, actually. It's very easy to be sat at home and you know everybody's waiting online these days for live times and live interviews. And look, it's not always perfect. It doesn't always work the way it should. And the way they coped in the afternoon, they switched us to 30 seconds, which is a huge demand on, on the marshals. You know, okay, we're used to it over here in Ireland, but over there, it's, it's maybe not the done thing. So the way the marshals coped and the officials coped, you know, the last, the second loop was basically perfect. Um, and it was lash and rain and it was windy. So, you know, it's it's unfair to criticize them or, or, or to see the level of criticism that they were given online. You know, there was people on the ground making big decisions and it was a very enjoyable rally. Um, the stages were difficult, they were challenging. There was good spectators there, which were well controlled. So. Look, it was a difficult day for them. I'm sure they've learned a lot, but um, from our point of view, we, we enjoy our day. Yeah, like Marion, like 
as, you, as, as Liam was saying there, it's very easy to sit in front of a keyboard and you know give out, but to be actually there on the ground trying to make a decision and like maybe ten other guys shouting at you and you know you're trying to see a, a pathway through this, and like I think there's a lot of calm heads there too, really. Yeah, and I guess it's always hard because you know they want everybody to get the mileage because you know at the end of the day the rally anyway is quite short. I mean, so if you lose any mileage, it's a good percentage gone, you know. But you know to make that call then to you know you get to a point where you basically have to tell some people that they're going to lose you know two stages or whatever just so they can get the rest in. And it, it's a ballsy call to make. And to be fair, they, they had to. But um, yeah, like Liam said in the afternoon, then it, everything ran like clockwork really. You know, it's the weather turned on them as well, which wasn't welcome for me or them. <laughs> You know, yeah, the, the, they responded well, I guess, and that's all they could have done. Mm -hmm. And like, the five-stage loop, you, you know, you had to be very brave with your tyre choice. Like, if, once you were out, you were out. No, I suppose it wasn't about being brave, it was about being safe, because that's how those boys got the jump on me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we expect, well, the, basic, the wind was quite high, so they, they'd forecast some showers in the morning, and they kind of never materialised. And we, I, I actually very nearly went on an even harder tyre. And we decided in the end, like, no, it's spitting rain. We'll just we'll just go on what we had. And it rained even more and more. And to be fair, Will and Liam took a wet. I don't know if it was... I, probably they told me a lucky call, to be fair. So it is what it is. And it was funny being there because Keith went on, on like the opposite of the inverse. Yeah, he swapped. In, in yeah. the morning, we were on the soft slick and Keith was on the wet. <laughs> then we swapped the afternoon. So that, that five stage loop was very difficult to judge. I mean, the first loop, we were hoping that our tyre choice would suit stages three, four, and five. I, I, don't, I don't would have suited three, four, and five, except four and five were cancelled. So the tyre was a bit of a lottery at the weekend, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, that, you know, like that is what it comes down to. Like, you know, you can have the best Waller crew, you can have the best people on the ground, but sometimes it's, it's the roll of the dice, really. Yeah, it can all change pretty quickly, I suppose, as well. I mean, the way the showers are blowing around and... I think the amount of rain it did do when we were on the second stage of the the last loop, I don't think that that was even forecast. To be fair, it just lashed it down. I think on like the first three cars, I would say, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew then I kind of pulled it in halfway through that stage because I knew like these boys are on wet, so it's, it's pointless trying to race. I tried to do it in West Cork with Josh last year, and it was like trying to push like a a fifty ton weight up a up a truck up a hill. You know, it's impossible. <laughs> so you just gotta pick your battles and know when when it's done. Yeah. And then, you know, like we've seen the crowds at the ceremonial start on Friday evening and then, you know, at the finish on Saturday as well. Like, this is, there's a lot of hype building around the BRC this year and now with the new ATV coverage and all, things are starting to turn around. It's looking a lot more positive. Marion, was this one of the things that attracted you to the series this year? Yeah, for sure. And obviously with the, the ITV <clears throat> coverage as well, with the BRC, I mean, that was really attractive for Castrol. Um, so we, we managed to get them on board and then when the ITV coverage was announced it, it was a, a real no-brainer for them and that's kind of how it stemmed into being kind of what it is you know with a, like a, a two-car team and uh hopefully a second Yaris will come for Chris sometime soon but um you know that's still yet to be fully confirmed but um yeah it's 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 much more interesting for them anyway when they can see themselves and their names and the cars and obviously luckily for us at the weekend two cars on the podium you know and and they see their names all over national television. It's it's a lot more attractive for them, and I think that's drawn a lot of names into, or a lot of good names into the championship, and that's what built the whole buzz around it. And I think when a few boys start to go, more boys sitting at home think, well, that might be worth doing. You know, it's it's kind of what the Irish Tamil Championship maybe had two three years ago when everybody decided they wanted to come to Galway. You know, so you know, I think everyone goes through their phases. The BRC's had its share of, of pretty shit times to be fair so i i think they deserve a break and yeah hopefully it'll come this year yeah i could liam like yourself and will have you know been through the brc and the, you've always said like you know maybe the, the numbers weren't there but the quality was always there you've always had good rallies there and good races and it's, it's nice to see them getting you know the, the entries that the, they probably deserve now yeah again a lot of people in the background put a lot of effort in to make a championship like that mm -hmm. so it's, it's a wee bit nostalgic going back you know racing marion like william and i raced marion in 17 in the Peugeot's. now they have definitely grown up a bit anyway and we're in faster <laughs> cars now so um, yeah look it's, it's great to see the brc and good health hopefully it continues throughout the whole year because you know normally you see a bit of a drop off but um no it's a good championship i always say that you know, whenever you can do a championship and young drivers can go and do a recce and make their pace notes, particularly on the gravel, 
that's a really important stepping stone if you want to go any further in rallying. You know, if you want to go to Europe or, or WRC, um, you need a championship that you can practice making your notes on. So it's ideal. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about making notes and, and gravel and all. Round two, rally nuts coming up in a few weeks. And like, again, you know, it's been a round that's been in previous years and it always provides a very stern challenge as well. Yeah, we were talking about this uh, at the weekend. I remember doing those stages in the Fiesta in 2007. So show me age. Very good rally, uh, fantastic stages. Uh, Marion has a bit of a home advantage there, so we'll come oh. that against them. Um, I think they're using my hair now. Though. I think they are. Yes, I think they are. But I haven't. Even, the last time I was in my hair, and I was in a ditch in 2016. It was the, It was actually the the time the BRZ came back for the first time. Um, so obviously the RL did it and everything. We were in an R2 T Fiesta. That was the last time I was in Mahern, I think. I think the last time we were in Mahern was uh, 2017 GB and run a ditch. GB would have been, yeah. yeah you so, were in a ditch yeah. as well, huh? <laughs> so, let's come and book you around that one, right? I have an excuse there was ice. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, had, we had no excuse. It was really bad. But um, yeah, look, really looking forward to it. And there's a bit of a buzz. I think Jos Verstappen's coming over and... Um, yeah, it's, it's great to see. That's a proper gravel rally, proper good Welsh gravel rally, that one. Yeah, and the mileage as well. I think it's up to 60 miles, so 100k on gravel is, it'll be proper, I think. It'll be nice. Yeah, and like, and Marianne, for yourself, obviously a whole new learned experience again, then, you know, getting the Yaris onto gravel. Like, obviously, you'll have a test plan beforehand, but like, does that, you know, does that, you haven't done a lot of gravel, does that a, a concern, or do you, once you get going, you're quite happy? I can't be a concern, really. I mean, it is what it is. Um, we went okay in November, to be honest. We did a rally over here. Um, we won every stage there before we... I, just made, I made a small mistake and just clipped the wheel and, you know, that was that. But, yeah, look, the, the, the level will be slightly different in a couple of weeks' time, but there's only so much I can do, you know. We'll, we'll prep the same as always. And probably a bit like Will and Liam went into the, the two rallies they've just done, you know. It's kind of trying to temper the expectations a bit and just drive your own rally and see what you can do. Because, you know... It looks like the Toyota is very, very good on gravel, and if we can adapt to it, then try and make the most of that and just try not to be too far away. Excellent. And Liam, from your own point of view too, that'll be your first time on gravel in the, the Fiesta as well too. And, you know, you've had Croatia before that. Lots of seat time, but change the surface, is a, does that change your mindset as well? Yeah, well, we'll have no test planned. Um, hopefully we can get something sorted. But, uh, yeah, first time on gravel in the car. Um but, you know, that's that's a nice challenge. This is a great problem to have, you know, going into these rallies and, you know, learning the setup and, and working with the engineers and working with them sport to try and get us into the zone. So, like, as I said earlier, we're just using this as prep for WRC2 campaign. So I think we'll have Portugal will be the first WRC round in, uh, on gravel uh, in, in that car. So, yeah, great seat time and hopefully we can learn plenty to bring forward. Yeah, and, like, just to finish up with yourself then, like, you know, you are part of the M Sport team. Is there like, do you actually pinch yourself now and again thinking, holy, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, he pinches himself because he still tells everyone he's a driver, not a co driver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, it's great to be involved with a team like M Sport. I mean, I remember watching Malcolm <laughs> in the Michelin Pilot car, you know, the blue and yellow car, yeah. and, you know, stand in the back of the truck there at the weekend, you know, we'll stand between Jimmy and Alistair McRae. And, you know, I can remember watching both of them. So, like from that point of view, yeah, it's a bit surreal, but you don't really have time to dwell on that. You're you're so focused, and the good thing about the team is they've so much experience, and they really support you. And you know, Rich was there at the weekend, and he was able to guide the team in, in a really good way. And you know, it's it's a real honor to be a part of that team. And uh, Max showed his speed at the weekend, and I so did Guy. I think I had a few problems, and Max lit off too. But um, no, it's it's a nice atmosphere in the team, and I'm looking forward to working you know with them the rest of the year. Yeah, and finally, Mary and yourself, like, you know, the Yaris brought you out of the box this year, and you were one of the very first teams in the world to get a Yaris. Like, that speaks volumes. Like, we've often said how good a team the Melbourne End Motorsport is. Like, this confirms it whenever Toyota is preferred to give just one of the first Yaris's out in private hands. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of an honour, to be fair. I mean, got a very early car. There's a huge, huge demand for them. So, I guess we're trusted with it, and... You know, for me, kind of at the weekend, I think I said it in the forum on the Thursday night as well, it was kind of, it was a nice achievement for, for me and my dad business-wise as well, as well as, you know, for me just driving the rally, which is 
probably quite a different approach to a lot of the boys driving the championship. But you know, it's yeah, it's it's really nice to have and and the support we've had off them. You know, the engineers and stuff. We we knew them quite well from before, but um, yeah, the support to to get the car over and the the support they gave us to get get the thing up and running really and and you know that they sent an engineer for the rally. Scott, the sales guy, was there and got a mechanic off them. So. Yeah, look, there's a lot of input going in from Toyota, and and yeah, I think it's a credit, and it shows how far we've come probably since probably we took on the Polos in in 2020 as well. You know, um, probably been a bit of a thorn in M Sports side at times, but you know, it it's it's good for this competition because I think, and and my dad thinks it as well. I think the Fiesta, obviously, if you look at I think 2016 to 2020, the Fiesta completely dominated British rallying. And in fairness, there wasn't a hell of a lot that could that could match it over here because I think Skoda they never really they sold so many cars elsewhere. It was never so much of a an issue for them. The UK market, you know, if people wanted to buy a car, they would kind of thing. But then when VW came along, the the engineers obviously there was a few who had worked at ProDrive and they had a genuine interest in the market, and we took that on. And yeah, we kind of kind of turned the tide a bit, so it was nice. And and now there's a genuine competition, and people buy different cars, and and there's more variety out there. So. I mean, you look at the podium at the weekend with three different cars on the podium. So, yeah, it's great to see, and and it's nice to have a bit of variety and to have a bit of a bit of a fight as well between manufacturers and drivers. Thanks there to the lads, and an absolute pleasure to happen to them three as well too. So, and now we talk Circuit Ireland, and Luke joins us once again. Circuit Ireland's just days away, Connor, and we've been treated to some fantastic rallying. But you know, the man to beat is Keith Crum and I suppose Mikey alongside him there, like they have been unstoppable in the first couple of rounds. It'd be interesting to see hopefully with all the gremlins behind them from last weekend. Well that's it, you know, if if they can be back on track again, car fully sorted and a bit of confidence returned, which I've no doubt in Keith's confidence, uh what do you call it? They're gonna be hard to beat. But however, if we look back to last year, it was the circuit that Callum Devine put his championship back on track with. Yeah, I look that you know that one hundred percent there. What uh, Connor said, like you know, something clicked with Callum on the circuit, and he just uh, rolled from there. Like it's too early in the championship to write them off yet. Yeah, and I think it's one of those that it doesn't guarantee extra performance, and obviously there are more than one drop score. I think you can count in Ireland, but. Al now needs a bit of a result here against Keith, doesn't he? With Keith with two wins on the board, he needs to stop that momentum that Cronin has built up. Keith obviously isn't just going to go, go on, Cal, I'll let you have this one. <laughs> As well. But I think what's interesting, and I think it was in Keith's press release actually, where he's effectively acknowledged that obviously last time out in West Court, Cal did get the jump on him. But because of how short this route is, it's one day, I think it's eight stages, isn't it, compared to the mammoth three day. West Court. Keith can't afford to wait that long to get past because if he does that, he's going to run out of off stage miles. So, yeah, I think we're talking about two drivers. There's loads of them, obviously, they're going to be in the race. But I do think Callum is in a very, yeah, one one to watch me for sure. I think he's going to be very, very quick. So, we trying very hard this weekend. Yeah, because like you've seen that at the first couple of stages in, in West Court, Callum, you know, not to say he come away from Galway a bit downhearted. But, it, you know, he came away, he had thrown ever and that and still was in second. He went into West Cork very determined that he was going to put his mark down and put a weight on it. But, like, as you say, like, there's 102, 103 starters there. Like, you know, there's going to be six or seven of them guys all going there thinking, you know, I want to win this rally. Alex. I actually think... Oh, sorry, go on. No, nope, go ahead, Matt. Look. I was just going to say, the one person for me, actually, that I think has been quietly impressive is Matt Edwards. Because I think it's rare to see what happened to him in, in Galway, particularly because he, I think he said it to you guys on this very podcast, actually, that he, he couldn't, what he's very difficult is he couldn't quite fully understand what went wrong, how it happened. So it's obviously a lot harder for a driver to move on from any kind of mishap if, you, if you're not sure. You can't quite immediately bury it in the back of your mind because it's like a lingering open investigation almost in your own brain but I think what he did in West Cork was very mature he, he did his own rally didn't he? he was kind of in his own sort of point of the leaderboard so on a sprint event like this he's going to really have to really hit the ground running on on stage one but he's getting ever more comfortable I think with that car he's, he's obviously very accustomed now to, to Iris Road I don't know if he's actually done the stages this weekend don't need to check with him and check back all DWRCs and stuff. But I think certainly if the others have problems, he's going to be there to strike. It'll be difficult for him to be right at the front. But him, I, I would say outside Callum and Keith, he would be my, my third sort of tip for victory for me. 
Yeah, and the, Connor, the good thing about this is, there, you know, there are practically new stages for everybody. The, the last time the stages were used, you know, was 2011, 2012. Um, and even then, they're, they're not exactly the stages that were used. Some was used in reverse, some bits and pieces of stages and one thing and another. So this is new territory practically for everybody this weekend. And we've seen last year in the circuit, and that threw mm. a curveball into it. You know, there's not that same familiarity there. Absolutely. It does level the playing field for everyone, no doubt about it. But again, you you know, you have a certain home advantage there for Callum. Johnny Greer's another one that's very comfortable. And we've seen Matt, you know, not on the same stages, but on the Ulster Rally, he goes very hard. And again, the Ulster Rally is a sprint rally. We can see Matt can get up to speed quite quickly when he needs to. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm on the, or two men we haven't even mentioned is like Josh Moffat. You know, Josh is, is sooner or later that this, you know, the sitter is going to click with him. And we've all seen how quick he can be. And Desi Henry, another man too, you know, quite locally stages for him as well too. Neither of them, those two can be discounted either, look. I, I'm actually going to come back at this with a question, which is a weird way to do it in thought. But was it last year that Desi was really, really quick? On the circuit, was it? No, that was, that was twenty-two. That was two. twenty-two. Yeah, uh-huh. that makes yeah. me feel old. That that's two years ago. <laughs> but I, I seem to remember that. Yeah, that there was a there was one year that he was particularly close to to getting that elusive first tarmac win. But you're right, um, Josh. I think it was actually quite sad to see in a way how sort of down he was in in West Court. The pace improved over the course of the weekend, so that's the the positive thing. But you're right. I think he's got to be close, if not fully on top of this car by now. And when he's comfortable. The, the, the whole virus rally knows just how dangerous he could be. So, so yeah, this this is the great thing. There's so many top cars and guys that that are in that race, and so many that maybe aren't in the the victory fight that are actually also really competitive and closer than you might think. And I want to give at this point uh, a small shout out to David Kelly, who I think is mm-hmm. for me personally really flown under the radar this year, and I guess in the last couple of years in general. But his start to this year, I think, has been really, really impressive. Um, not quite on that front running pace, but he's been getting really good top 10 results and not making any silly errors. So I think it's been a very, very good start to the year for, for him as well. Yeah, because like, I've seen that, you know, at the start of the year, he's moved away from the sitter and he's moved to the polo. And I think, oh God, everybody else is moving the other way. You know, is this a mistake? But actually, I would agree with you. He, he's really matured this year and he's been, you know, even his stage end report, you know, talks and all, it just seems that wee bit more settled, a wee bit more uh, mature. Yeah, he's he's a guy that I sort of know a bit more than some of the others because he spent some time in the Junior British Championship. So I got to know him a bit personally then as well. So he's he's always been a good laugh as David. Um, so it, it's nice to see that he's he's sort of finding that balance in having fun but also being serious at the same time, which is not the easiest thing to do because sometimes it's you're out right for a laugh, you're out right for a laugh, but you're in these cars, you're spending this money, you kind of <laughs> you want to try and be competitive as well but yeah I agree I think everything's just sort of clicking together for him now he's found the right pack he's got a very good relationship with Dean alongside him as well so so yeah I think it's been a very good start and I hope we can continue that form going forward yes for sure and then you know in the two wheel drive too like maybe not the massive numbers you know and the you know the, the big escorts and one thing or another but still it's going to be very strong there too you, you know you have Frank Kelly Adrian Hillington both on home turf like the, the stage is practically go past their door you know there's other guys there like Connor Murphy making, you know we all know how quick Connor can be like so there's going to be a lot to play for there too um like those guys never the the, the heat of the battle we've seen West Cork too, one stage, I think there was four guys separated by less, less than half a second. Like, that's mental rallying too. Oh, look, there's ferocious speed there. And, you know, a couple of other names you've missed there, like Damien Toner and um, Kevin Kelleher, you know, they're all putting in strong performances over the last couple of rounds. And again, familiarity, you know, with the, with the roads up in the north, um, you know, certainly is going to stand to them. That's for sure, that's for sure. And then look, and then the uh, Rally 4 guys, you know, these young guys, like, you know, we're going to beat this drum again, the MI Rally Academy, what, what it's brought. But like, we've seen West Cork, you know, Ryan McHugh, phenomenal performance, fastest two-wheel drive on the Friday night in the dark. And even Saturday and Sunday, he didn't fall that far back. Times were still strong, he was still punching them in. And like, the wee fest is well sorted. And then there's a gaggle of Peugeots and all behind him there as well. Yeah, Ryan McHugh, I have to say. Um, I'll be very honest, not a name I knew too much about before West Cork, but I think anybody that follows rallying slightly about him after that, it was mighty. Because we, we all know how competitive that, that class is, how close the cars are. So for him to be pulling that advantage that he did was 
stunning. There's there's no other word for it. So I think he sort of put himself on the map. But as you say, there's a, a proper little huddle of these two oh eights now, which you can't miss on the stages, particularly if you're watching them. They're I think possibly the loudest car ever in terms of the, the pots and bangs at the back of those is quite exciting. So yeah, re really great to see so many young drivers now in, in proper cars and able to make good accounts of themselves. That's for sure. And then Connor as well, then is that then the Storix is out in force this weekend as well too. And then with all the you know, the Northern Ireland Championship regulars, I know it's not around the Northern Ireland Championship, but it's great to see so many of the Northern Ireland guys you know competing again because they had kind of shunned the circuit there for a few years as well. I had, had lost a wee bit of popularity amongst them, but um, you know, it's good and there's a decent entry for them. But again, you know, Thomas Davis, you know, has had a phenomenal start to the Irish Tartmark Championship and it's going to be hard to look past him or even Hugh McQuaid. Um, you know, and then you've Trevor Wilson as well. They're another man and not, you can't discount. Yeah, uh, Trevor, the stage is quite close for home. Yeah. And then the BM and all then as well too. So, yeah, I, I, I would sort of tip my hat towards Trevor now over the weekend, of, especially if he's finally got that, uh, the BMW to his liking. Dude, that's it. If, if everything is all fine tuned and goes the right way for him, yeah, he's going to be a hard man to beat. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So, anyway, we'll start wrapping things up. But uh, before we go, we'll have to ask you your predictions. Yeah. <laughs> and the last time I asked, look first. So, we're going and we'll make it very clear who's going to win the rally? <laughs> Connor. <laughs> Ooh. Nah, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm going to throw it out there and say Calum Divine. Look, your thoughts on it? I wanted to say Calum as well, but for the interest of more entertaining broadcasting, I'll say Keith Cronin. Yeah, um, I'm going to have to go Keith Cronin as well. I just think they've had a great start to the year and hard to look past them. Connor, what can we say? Always a pleasure catching up with you, look, isn't it? Uh, listen, he's a great person to speak to. He's so knowledgeable. It doesn't matter if we're talking WRC, BRC or the Irish Tarmac Championship. He knows his stuff and he's always a bit of crack. That's for sure. That's for sure. So now we're going to catch up with Graham Stewart, uh, uh, event director from the, the Circuit of Ireland, and then that will roll into Kevin O'Driscoll. Graham, event director for the Circuit of Ireland. We're a couple of days away now from the, the start of it. And, you know, round three of the Tarmac Championship. And you've pulled together a fantastic looking event. Um, over 100 starters, real compact loop. It's looking really promising for the weekend. Well, I say we'll get the weather to play ball. <laughs> we'll probably get the <laughs> Got a perfect event in our, you know. Um, yes, we're really, really pleased with the entry coming in this year and um, from the tarmac and a lot of local competitors there. I think, I think maybe the compactness of the, the route has, has really steered them towards us. We've got a very good entry and a strong entry, and, and more than probably I'd envisage coming to the, the, this weekend. But yes, yeah, so it's looking good so far. Yeah, like the, the Tarmac Championship has got off to a flying start, you know, two rounds down, and the Waller hasn't been kind to either of them, so we're, fingers crossed, we're nearly due a dry weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Why should we break the mould in that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's the one-day format this year, you know, and yes, we're going to have the, the naysayer saying it's not the circuit of old and one thing or another, but, you know, a one-day event brings its own challenges, like, there's no margin for error, there's going to be, you know, it's going to be hot and heavy right from from the, the very start of the very first stage? Well, the, the stages, the nature of the stages themselves are very tight and they're demanding stages. I mean, nobody will come out of the recce and say, oh, <laughs> that's going to be an absolute breeze. I mean, there'll yeah. be certain point, they'll, they'll be breaking a sweat on the stages, do you know what I mean? And and yeah, I mean, as much as we would love to go down the route of a two, three, four, five day circuit of Ireland rally, unfortunately, the, the world we live in just won't accommodate that for us. You know what I mean? One of the biggest problems is, as, as any club will find at the minute, is finding roads suitable to rally on. And then also the amount of people moving into the country. Uh, and I say, you're just not, I mean, stages that have gone from maybe having 15, 20 people living on them over seven miles, or you're now up into 90, 100 doors you're knocking just over the seven miles. And, and that's all impacting on the amount of roads that we can use. And then... <clears throat> I say also going back in the day where there was only the two closed road events in Northern Ireland back in the day, the circuit, the Ulster Rally, you're now competing with four or five other clubs all running closed road events. So your manpower all of a sudden has gone from a lot of people wanting to do two rallies, you know, working two rallies to spread that over the whole year to to the, the four or five rounds. So as much as we'd love to, so we'll have to, I say, sit with what we have. We've got a one day event and we think, it's what the competitors want, and hopefully the spectators will have a great day's viewing. 
Yeah, because like from a competitor's comp point of view, like this sta this rally, the stage is one finishes and it's a very short road mileage to the next one starts into the next one, <clears> and like you know that's fantastic because there's no there's no mud hanging about, there's no long road sections. This is all going to be and a very tight loop, and it, you know it doesn't it starts you know at half nine or something. I think the first cars yeah, away, yeah. and it'll all be read <clears> up by before four <clears> o'clock <throat> on Saturday afternoon. All been well. Well, first car back back at four o'clock. So yeah, I mean. The lip itself, the road set, there's nothing worse than nowadays than sitting for mile after mile in a noisy rally car. As anybody will tell you, and you know, the, the, the road sections are short but long enough for the cars to cool down and the drivers to get a breath, but not too long that you know you're spending half the day just driving on road sections. So I say that that the lip, I mean, we've brought the road miles down to 63 miles for a one day rally, which we are, <laughs> but the nature of the stage has lended to that and hence the service area. So you know, like you're Five miles out, six mile road section stage, you know. So just all really built, built, builds into a really short day and hopefully a good competitive day for everybody. Yeah. And like, you know, we remember the Circuit Ireland whenever, you know, the ERC come to pass, like in the, you know, the 2010s. That's like, there's some of these stages, parts of them that were used and that, and they provided a real stern challenge for the European guys coming over here back in 2011, 2012. Yeah, yeah, I say 12 years, I think, was the last time. Funny, one of the, the residents on the stage, he had, they just moved in the last time they ran in there in 12 years this year. So that's how we were able to work out those those sort of figures. But I mean, we're going back, I'm sure, you know, the sweat house of old and when, when there'd have been Group B rally cars in those stages and Mad 400s without power steering. So <laughs> the, the drivers are just blessed themselves with got power steering now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like these, you know, these are proper old school Circuit Ireland Ulster stages, you know, like, so uh, yeah. that they are a real test of man machine. <clears throat> yeah, we've been, and yet again, been very, very lucky this year that we have, I think on the whole route, we have no built out junctions, um, one bus stop chicane and one actual chicane over the whole route. So yet again, the roads are driven as the roads are. We haven't thankfully had to do too much adjustments, you know, and because the drivers will tell us nothing worse than bouncing through chicanes and mm -hmm. clatter and bales. So we luckily we don't have that this year. Yeah. And I, I know that there's been a few competitors saying that, you know, the stages is passing past their door, like Frank Kelly, the McGr uh, Mick McGrew, you know, so for them, it must be really <laughs> cool having the rally going past their door as well. Well, funny, I was, I was out on recce yesterday, had the, the, the pleasure of standing out in stages and, and Alan Jardine stopped past us and I think he said, we were doing a just checking them outside a, a, a primary school, and he says, I, I, "Don't quote me on this, but I believe he said it was 1969." He walked through the doors of that primary school. <laughs> I mean, so <clears throat> I'm hoping that he remembers stages from all the days back. <laughs> and his co-driver literally lives over in the back road too. You know, so it's great because it, we've had a real, real great feedback from from residents this year, more so than than probably. My last five or six years involvement, uh, that the amount of people who, who are just over the moon at the events, that the rallies coming past their door, and I think that's one of the luxuries that we have this year is being in good rally country. That that the that the residents will really work with us, and yet again, because without the help of them, yeah, everybody knows the events just wouldn't happen. Yeah, because that whole Dungannon, Ochnacloy, you know, Armagh area is a real. There's a, you know there is a real strong rally community in that area. And you can see that with the entry list, the amount of local uh, competitors is and through, you know, list throughout the whole field, and that's great yep. to see. And as you say, you're in the heart of rally community there. But yet again, I mean, our ethos recently has been to, to make the event suit the competitor rather than suit the organizer or suit the spectator. You know, because they're the ones putting their hands in the pockets for the entry fees, and they're the you know they're the customers. So you try and get the event to suit them. So a compact good no ridiculous early starts, you know, and, and just keep the costs. And yet again, same in service. Everybody's treated the same. You get the same area, be it you come with an R5 car or be it a box all Nova, you know, everybody, you know, and I think it's the ethos is just to try and bring the whole family together and run as one big unit. Yeah, and like the, the service area too is a, a fantastic like, uh, <coughs> amenity you have there too. It's a, a good, dry, you know, so uh, you know, solid base surface area as well. Oh yeah, it's super. And the <coughs> Granville Mart this year have been very good. I mean, literally they, they ran their tr their truck run yesterday, and, and I say that was a very successful day for them out of there. And then I say to have us Hilligans in next week, I say we'll be. But no, they've been very, um, you know, it's a great service, a great space. And, and I mean, yet again, everything's in there. The park firm is in there, re, you know, obviously the refuel, et cetera. So you, 
you're not having people traipse up and down the road, you know, so scrutinies, you know, you come in, you do your scrutiny, you park up in your service, so you're ready to leave there the next morning. Um, <clears throat> you know, you're not <clears throat> doing time to the literary service or going to stage one, which is only four and a half miles from service. So just to try and get a good compact day for everybody, you know. Yeah. And like give us, you know, you're saying like you know, first car away, half nine, Saturday morning, what time roughly are they back into service, you know, just for people that want to go and maybe have a um, loser around? Gee, I would say come back in at about a half eleven, twelve o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't be far away from the service, and yet again, it's great parking up the main road, so there's plenty of room for people to come in. And <clears throat> uh, yeah, and uh, but yet again, anybody out on stage is please, please, please obey the marshals. They're doing a hard job. <laughs> They're out there in the by all weathers, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and all we need to do, please give them the respect that they deserve, and they do. And please listen to what they tell you because they do know best. <laughs> yeah, that this is the thing. You know, these are the people that's there week in week out, and it's very important that we respect and, and listen to what we've been told to do. Because, <clears throat> as you say, these are the the guys and girls that know what's going on. The day, I mean, it's gone in the days so where you tried to tell your mate from the pub on a Thursday night to go rally on the Saturday. The marshal, they're all trained now. They go through a training course. They're all registered marshals, you know. So <clears throat> from a competitor point of view, we're very lucky that we now have people out on stages who, heaven forbid, there is an incident, know exactly what to do, you know. So yet again, people come to spectate for the first time, second, you know, listen to the people who know. They put a bib on, but they put a bib on, you know, and, and it's not just to put a bib on for the sake of it to get closer to the cars. They put a bib on now because, you know, they know what they're doing. So yet again, please respect the marshals. They do know what they're talking about. Yeah, for sure. And like another thing we probably should touch on as well, the, you know, the, what rallying can bring to the local area as well. You know, they, I'm no doubt about, you know, Dungan and Cookstown, that, that whole area will benefit from the rally coming in. You know, the hotels, the guest houses, you know, the petrol stations, even, you know, the hot food counters and shops. And like, we tend to forget about that. You know, rallying brings a lot into the community and we probably don't talk about that enough. Well, you're probably right. Yet again, 100%. I mean, we're, as I said, we're very well, you know, we're welcome with open arms throughout, you know, from the early stages, etc. cetera, where, you know, with great support. I mean, we've, we've moved and had a lot of our meetings in the Dungannon Rugby Club, you know, who have welcomed us. We have, they have great meeting rooms. And so, you know, you just move in around the area, as you say, you bring a lot. You know, we try to bring as much, but the people have been very welcoming. So you, you'd love to come back two, three years down the line too, you know. Excellent. And, you know, so I suppose, you know, we'll finish up now, but the, the most important thing is listen to what's been told, uh, you know, obey the marshals, obey the officials, and fingers crossed we have good weather on Saturday. Well, that's it. So everybody bring, bring a coat just in case, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah, we'd just like to thank everybody involved. You know, we have a great team around. It's not a big team, but we have a great team. And, and thanks quite to all the hours, the, the weeks and months that they've gone into the event, you know, and then all the marshals, timekeepers for coming. I mean, the list is just so long, but yeah, we can't do it without them and the residents. Kevin, hard to believe we're in round three of the Tarmac Championship already. Circuit of Ireland, like Keith and Mike has you know, been dominant so far, two maximum point scores, but that's not uh, to say that it's going to get it easy this weekend. Uh, Circuit of Ireland... Like old stages, but uh, long times as any, I'm sure probably none of these guys have probably done those stages before. Yeah, I'm not even sure. I've never been on those stages myself, actually. So I don't, I don't really know when last were used. I know they're classic circus stages, and it'll certainly be a good leveling ground for a lot of those top uh, top guys, you know, or any of them, really, to be honest with you, you know, because uh, and I suppose it's, it's hot and heavy on West Cork as well, and there's a different dynamic because whereas, okay, West Cork is a fast rally, three days, this is a real sprint, you know, it's real, uh, it's for, for anybody trying to catch Keith at the moment, they really have to make some kind of a shape uh, this weekend, you know, and last year we were saying the same, Callum got off to, you know, a relatively poor start, but won the circuit and did kick-started his time championship mm -hmm. season, so, you know, um, yeah, it'll be interesting, there's certainly, uh, there's a lot to look forward to this weekend, all right. Yeah, because like you, you know, the one day format brings us a different challenge. You know, like West Cork. Yes, it was it was an incredibly fast rally right from the get go. But this is like there's no margin for error here at all. Like that, you know, if you lost ten seconds, it's going to be nearly impossible to pull that back. Yeah, you want to get the one day to do it, and and that's it. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, four locations. So you know, I'd imagine. I don't know the stages that particularly well, but they're only they're only running them twice, so you know uh, it'll be all depend on how they get on this on the second run over that stage, and obviously it'll depend on the weather conditions as well. You know, uh, I believe that can be tricky enough. I mean, the motor rain has fallen here in the last while. 
I'm sure it's replicated all over the country anyway, so it has to be a, mm-hmm. it'll have to be a factor in there as well. I don't think there's anything as a dry, completely dry rally yet so far this year. So no, and like you know, I don't know. Yeah, and then there's you know, it's going to be even if it's dry for a couple of days. There's going to be a lot of water lying in the ditches and one thing or another. And like we've seen this year, particularly the amount of cotton that's been going on as well. Yeah, and something like that was very prevalent in West Cork, even though the first day was dry, the second day was very wet at times. But despite the council having done a huge amount of clearing and cutting, there was nowhere for water to go anywhere. And the same, the same would apply. We've had a very wet week here in Galway, and I'm sure it's, it's no different anywhere else. So mm-hmm. it's going to saturate it. So any bit of cutting, the first one, could have implications on the second one for you know anyone really. So mm-hmm. yeah, it'll be an interesting one. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes because uh, I think you know after. Keith, like obviously, is a con- looks in control of the championship after the first two rounds. But this happened in 2016 as well, where he took full points in the first two rounds. And you know, I mean, last weekend showed that you know there's nothing, nothing, uh, there's nothing depth in the rallying. He had such problems with the car last weekend. That could happen, you know, any, any on any event. And all of a sudden, you know, the chasing boys have been on top of him again. So, like, <clears throat> still, he's the man to catch. There's no question. I mean, he's been on fire so far this mm-hmm. year. But Callum, we you know Callum will, you know, I think Callum will be there thereabouts. And like, like any of the top six or seven there will be really pushing hard to you know just to make up points I mean even like there's even Mr. West, Miss West Cork but he won't be unfamiliar with territory like that and mm-hmm. he was very very quick in Galway very unlucky uh, you know probably deserved third place but didn't finish there but you know I think again he'll be somebody to to, to watch out for you know Johnny Greer always goes well in those roads anyway mm-hmm. um, you know Ryan Ockham was incredibly quick in Galway at times just consistency is what he needs you know Matt Edwards so, I mean you know Matt, Matt is Matt like you know, he's just a treat out bit of champion and mm-hmm. and of course Josh Josh really seems to get the car right in the third day in West Cork he seemed to Probably the first real dry day he got to test the car right and was really very, very quick. Uh, it needs more time in that car, but look at the same time. Yeah, that's like, again, it's like coming, that, yeah. Uh-huh. It's coming, yeah. It's, it's just these time. It's just like anything you're changing, Mark. So it's going to it's going to be a bit difficult. But yeah, yeah I mean, all those boys are there. Like David Kelly's very consistent. Um, yeah. Catherine Catherine McCourt, McCourt, I think. Uh, Catherine yeah. McCourt, I think, could be a dark horse too. Like, he shows in the Ulster. Very good in the Ulster and the down rally yeah. previous to that. The Catherine yeah, think, seems to be of the ability to not do an event for a few months and step in and be quick, you know. So I yeah. Think, yeah, if he gets a good start on Saturday morning, I think he'll not be too far away either. I think so, yeah. I think so. I mean, him him and Johnny actually went really well. They challenged Callum and Adrian from all the best last year in the Ulster Valley. You know, so on a short sprint event like that, who's to say that, you know, a good start and, you know, it'll be just interesting to see who, who manages the best after that. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And then and the two will drive then too. Like we've seen West Cork, unfortunately, Frank Kelly slid off the road and there'll be a big push on to get the get the car fixed because mm. the rally practically runs past the, the end of his road on, on Saturday as well too. So no doubt there'll be a push in the Kelly household to get the car sorted. Yeah, I do it, I'm sure. And uh, like Frank will want to do his you own know, home stages. I mean, despite not finishing in West Cork, he's still in, in good shape enough. I mean, Kevin Keller is leading the championship. Kevin is, is seated there, had a good had a good run on his home rally uh, in West Cork. And then... Kevin Eves is second in the championship. He's only a point behind, but so is Frank. Like Frank is just a point off Kevin, and he's and he's the one with the most knowledge, we'll say, of, of that uh, area. I suppose he's not passing his house, but, but Conor Murphy might be at a slight disadvantage. But then Conor is always quick. Then you have Damien Toner, who was incredibly quick in West Cork, and as, as the rally went got quicker, mm-hmm. and I or got got um, into Progressive. the second and third days. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I think Damien likes to be somebody to watch out for as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's very very open. I think there's five or six boys there now that could really, that could really, uh, you know, have a right cut off at the be much between any of them. No, and Adrian Hillington, you know, practically on home ground there as well. Home ground, yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. And yeah. Barry Morris and the Darien, you know, we know how mm. quick the Darians are. If they're yeah, Darien right. type stages, he'll not be far away either. No, he won't. It'll, it'll depend on weather, obviously. If the yeah. weather is dry, yes, the Darien will have a good chance, but very, very difficult piece to handle when the weather is wet. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think, um, but yeah, again, he's near enough home, so it'll be an interesting one uh, to see how that goes. But there's lots of guys there. Mark Alcorn is there as well, of course, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, so yeah, you won't be too far away. <laughs> yeah, and Jason Black's first appearance of the year. So, like, I mean, there's, there's guys, yeah. there's, there's guys there, there you know, mm-hmm. there's every bit as much comp- competition and the Damien Tourish. Obviously, he had a short run in Mayo, but Damien's always quick as well. Like, you know, mm-hmm. David Moffat. I mean, if you know, if you were to pick anyone who could upset any of those top boys, it's probably him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, like, well, you know, you know and, a, and in a funny sort of way, you look down through the entry list there, like Desi Keenan's there as well. Like, there's some guys actually nearly using this as a warm up for Monaghan. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. And it, it does a bit of that in West Cork as well, actually. Do the two mm-hmm. boys, I think, you know, it's a big rally and there's probably 
up there with Donegal and West Cork is probably the best supported rally in the country after those two and mm-hmm. yeah everybody wants to get out and try and <laughs> shake down before Monaghan I, I expect a very very big entry from Monaghan it'll be a cracking rally as well it's a it'll be RC4 cars yeah. you know we have Ryan McHugh Keelan Grogan Keen Caldwell John O'Rourke like Ryan McHugh was having a crazy pace uh, down yeah. West Cork <laughs> he was, <laughs> he was like, after himself Wall Crichton with my two stars at West Cork yeah. without a doubt like with the times Ryan was putting in especially on the Friday night for somebody that yeah. never done, drove a rally car in the dark before it was phenomenal yeah it was well but he, he was very very quick in Galway too I know he was just probably just aged Keelan on the last stage and I know Keelan had problems as well in West Cork as well but but Ryan was just you know a different level in West Cork it just really was fantastic to watch it all those boys actually in the, in the rally four cars just equipment was just incredible so you know it, it is it's, a, it's it's actually very it's a very interesting category at the moment it's it's, it's competitive and it's tight and there's good racing in it and and you know okay the entry might they might need as many of them in, in the in the circuit but What's there will be worth watching, you know, and they'll they'll certainly be pushing for top ten places. Some of those boys, yeah, that's for sure. They'll not be far away. And then you know the historics, you know, and it's a strong entry in the historics as well too. Uh, like Tom Davis, the winner from West Corks, making the trip over again as well. Yeah, Earl Olson's back out in the BM as well too, and yeah, relatively yeah. close to home for him there as well. It is no Thomas is in a strong position in the championship anyway because he's after you know he's well clear, and he's the only one of the top seven registered guys that's actually doing doing the circuit now. To be honest, he's this year he's really showing it. in the past, you know, there would be having consistency at times and Thomas is a great guy and he's just he's just it was good, very good to see him win in West Cork because he drove a fantastic rally for the two days, very mature rally. So he's he'll be hard beat now. He's he's in a he's in a good place at the moment. He's driving really, really well. The car is fantastic and you know, um the only one that's you know, probably you know, obviously uh, Trevor won't be too far away but the only thing is Trevor hasn't much time done in that car and that's the goal mm-hmm. reactions as well but now Ray Breen went really really well in West Cork uh, so lucky not to finish but Ray was putting in some really good times as well so he wasn't yeah. all that far off behind uh, behind Thomas there so again like that you couldn't rule him out from having, have, from having a good result you know so the mm-hmm. really, really few guys there Hugh McQuaid won't be, won't be slow either of course uh, he was yeah. obviously well on the pace as well in, on the, in the historic scene so yeah it should be, it should be good enough Ali, actually it should be very interesting there as well yeah. But I'd fancy Thomas to keep the momentum going, but I would say it'd be Ray Breen and Trevor Wilson will be the two that will keep him the most honest, I think, you know, to get a clean run at it. Yeah, and then, you know, we're not right out of the circuit, only a few weeks in, in Killarney, and we're, you know, already at the halfway point of the Championship. It's unbelievable how, how it's time moving on this year. It is actually, uh, like we're three rounds in and it's so early in the year, but then it's, you know, it's just an early Easter. I mean, next year you'll have a similar scenario because you'll have Easter running just before Killarney, I think a week, two weeks before Killarney next year. So, mm-hmm. you know, the way, the way it works out, Easter being a movable feast, you're going to get, you're going to get either West Cork or Killarney, probably jumping in on top of the circuit from time to time or vice versa. So, um, but yeah, it, and it, it has been, there has been good racing. And then, of course, once Killarney hits the way to Donegal in the heat of battle. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see how the next two two events will work out and, if somebody can put it up to keep because the way he's going at the moment, like he's looking really, really strong. And um yeah, it'll be just it'll be very interesting to see how if anyone can can raise the bar enough to, to keep keep a real challenge, you know. And I think there's there is enough talent there. Like, I mean, it's just that you need to get off to a good start. Callum did in West Cork, but obviously the weather conditions probably didn't help him and keep drove a really, really good second day in West Cork. And this time around, you know, you don't have that same luxury of coming out from the second day to have a coach, you have to do it on the day, and that's it. That's uh, this episode over for another week. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and next week we'll catch up with all the latest news from the Circuit Ireland and then the Safari on this weekend as well too. So hopefully there'll be lots to talk about next week. So Connor, been a pleasure as always. Until next time, take care, speak soon, and bye.